Hi, Philip. It's Tuesday. It's Teaching Stuff Tuesday. Today, we're going to learn about one of my favorite wastes of time. Crossword puzzles. Specifically, the most famous crossword puzzle in the world, the New York Times crossword puzzle. I'd like to preface this by teaching you a little bit about Will Shorts. Will Shorts has been the crossword puzzle editor for the New York Times since 1993. 16 years ago. 17 years ago. He is the founder and director of the American Crossword Puzzle Tournament since 1978. Will Shorts is the only person in the world known to hold a college degree in enigmatology study of puzzles. After designing his own curriculum through Indiana University's individualized major program, Shorts is the author or editor of over 100 books and owns over 20,000, purportedly the largest private collection of puzzle books in the world. His favorite crossword of all time was the Election Day crossword of November 5th, 1996, designed by Jeremiah Farrell. Farrell? Pharrell? It had two correct solutions using the same set of clues. One saying that the lead story in tomorrow's paper. One would be Bob Dole elected. Or two would be Clinton elected. His favorite crossword clue of all time? It turns into another story. The correct answer being Spiral Staircase. Now that that's out of the way, on to the real business. The actual New York Times crossword puzzle. Oh my god, I almost knocked this over. The New York Times crossword puzzle follows a number of conventions, both for tradition's sake and to aid solvers in completing the crossword. Nearly all the New York Times crossword puzzles have rotational symmetry, which means that they can be rotated 180 degrees and still keep the position of all the black and white spaces. At any time a clue contains an abbreviation, the solution to the clue will also be an abbreviation. At any time a clue is a statement ending in a question mark, the answer is a play on words or a pun. Additionally, Themed puzzles may also require a certain squares to be filled with a symbol. This symbol, letter, or word will be repeated throughout each themed clue. Clues and answers must always match in speech, tense, number, and degree. Thus, a plural clue indicates a plural answer. The theme, if any, must be applied consistently throughout the puzzle. For instance, if one of the theme entries is a particular variety of pun, all of the theme entries will be puns of that type. In the old days of crossword puzzles, black squares were not allowed to occupy more than 16% of the grid. Nowadays, there is no strict limit in order to allow flexibility of the puzzle's theme. Still, cheater squares, ones that do not change the word count but are added in order to make construction easier, should be kept to a minimum. The grid must have all over interlock. In other words, the black squares may not cut the grid into more than one piece. A solver, theoretically, should be able to proceed from any section of the grid to any other without having to stop and start over and large clumps of black squares anywhere on the grid are strongly discouraged. No entries involving profanity, sad or disturbing topics, or overly explicit answers should be expected, though some have snuck in. The April 2006 puzzle contained the word scumbag, a slang term for condom, which had previously appeared in a Times article quoting people using the word. Shorts apologized and said that the term would not appear again. The word penis also appeared in a Maleska edited puzzle, the guy before shorts, clued as, this is great, this is great, the blank blank mightier than the sword. <laughs> a Sunday 21 by 21 or 23 by 23 puzzle will earn you $1,000. A daily 15 by 15 puzzle will earn you $200. So Philip, that's about all I know about crossword puzzles. I'll see you tomorrow with your book report. Hey Craig, if you're watching this, 33 down, salsa brand.